All right, Nick, lose it. What about the ladder, Governor? Well, there's another couple of minutes. You might just make it. You never know. Danny? Anything? Nothing. Come out, get the ladder, will you? Where the hell is he? Mr. Hardy! Talk about last minute. <laughs> As you will see, well worth the wait. Well, what do you think? It's a work of art, John. Thanks. End of last season, who'd ever have believed it? The longest five months of my life. Here they come! All hands to the pump. Don't lean against anything painted white. Good luck, everybody. Let's give them a Finally, on behalf of the Arkenfield team, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I hope we've shown you that with us, your horses will enjoy training and care second to none. What we might currently lack in facilities is more than compensated for by new ideas and expertise that will ensure your racing year is an exciting and rewarding experience. Our brochure tells you all about us. But if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. To Arkenfield Stables. How did I do? To the manor born. Really? Sounding all right to me. <laughs> Given the choice, I'd rather face the licensing committee of the Jockey Club any day of the week. <laughs> So I'm glad you could make it. Hello, James. Good Lord. What? Neville Preston. Where? Behind you. Who's Neville Preston? A trainer. A bit old-fashioned, but definitely out of the top drawer. Did you invite him? No, I didn't. What the hell is he doing here? I don't know. Probably knowing Neville here to... Pick off some of your owners? Like hell he is. Well, come on, everybody. Come and eat. Plenty of food. Come and help yourselves. Sir Neville, Mike Hardy. Yes, I know. Well, beats the tar out of slaving for that degenerate Latimer, eh? Is there something I can do for you? Not really. I was doing business locally. Just thought I ought to pop in and welcome a new inmate to the asylum. Mr. 
Miss Ross here? Yeah, she arrived a few minutes ago. She's in the office. Any problems? No. Hi. Francis. I hope you don't mind. I help myself. No. You've done me a favour. Been looking for the kettle for weeks. Yes, it's about time you got your office sorted out. Yes, I'm going to. I hear congratulations are in order. John Gray called in to see Dad on the way home. Two definites and half a dozen good prospects. Not to mention Rachel's pair. How did Brad take it? Surprisingly well, considering how twitched he's been about me training other people's horses. Said he hadn't had so much fun for years. Perhaps he's finally seen the light. Realised that what's good for Arkenfield has got to be good for him. That and the fact that the jockey club refused to give me a licence of all my eggs were in one basket. Hey, how did it go at the hospital? I wheeled him in. He walked out under his own steam. Great. They say he's in pretty good shape. But? At Dad's age, bones don't heal too well. So, lots of physio. Every day. Plus a home exercise plan that would crack an Olympic athlete. And riding? Definitely not. What the hell are you doing here? Hugo give me the push? It's my day off. I thought you might want a hand. But if you're going to be snooty about it... Black D, box number six. All right, Gary, take him home. Hey, not bad. Not fit. In fact, there isn't a single horse in the yard that's ready to race. Well, it's early days, Governor. Season's barely started. That's my point, Nick. The season has started, and races are being won. We've got to get a lot more work into these horses and get them fit. You're not still on about intensive training, are you? If it works for human athletes, it'll work for horses. Thoroughbreds aren't built for it. You put them through that sort of drill, they'll be fit for nothing but the knackers. All I need is one good horse, Joe. A few good wins under my belt, and I'll have owners queuing up. Home. Round again. Twice. Don't be daft. My office still stands. What about Nick? Acting head lad. He knows the score. Well... Tell you the truth, all this looks a bit dodgy to me. And although Latimer is one laddy da lout, well, you know, at my age, better the devil you know. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, all this assault course stuff would have me destroyed in a week. You and me both, the way I felt first thing. You still off the drink? Yeah. There you are, you see. Giving up the drink is bad for you. The body's like an engine. It needs a regular lubricant. <laughs> Try telling that to James Brand. Apart from Black Deed and Raw Silk, there are a bunch of donkeys. Hugo bought badly for him, but he can hardly hold that against you. Oh, no? No, we live in an unjust world. However, remember Hercules and don't despair. What? One of the labors. He cleaned out the Orgian stables. Perhaps you should do the same. And how do you suggest I tell James Brandt that? Arkenville Stables? Yes, yeah, speaking. Hello. No, no, no. I was just uh, trying to knock my office into shape. What can I do for you? What about? I see. Well, I could leave straight after second lot, be with you about 11. I gather you've had a solarium installed. 
And it installed at the end of last year. My yard manager estimates it will pay for itself by the end of this season. Very impressive. Like everything else. There's just one thing missing. A lab with an on-site technician to do daily blood tests and everything else you need. <laughs> Waste of money when I have a top-class vet at the other end of a telephone. What if he's busy on those occasions when you really need him? He drops whatever he's doing and comes running. As I said, very impressive. <laughs> but I'm sure you didn't invite me here just to show me how the other half trains. <laughs> Quite right, Hardy. This way. It's like an Irish bog. It's the same for a mile and a half. But we've not had that much rain, surely. Well, I've always had a bit of trouble with waterlogged ground. But it's never been as bad as this, so as you see, I'm having a, a new drainage system installed. However, that is not something I can do overnight. Which is where you come into the picture. Meet the mugger. A nasty piece of work. Lazy, temperamental. Won't run on anything except the firm is going, but naturally talented. Yes. Owned by Sheikh Walid. I saw him run at York at the end of last season. Till the final furlong, there was only one horse in it. Then he just seemed to run out of steam. Well, he wasn't fit. Hates training, you see. Especially on my all-weather gallops. Which means that although he runs well enough on the day, he inevitably ends up being beaten by inferior horses. Seems such a waste. His owner wants him to go in the high peak stakes at Sandown in a fortnight's time, but... Well, I'm not convinced. Bearing in mind his appalling condition and the situation with my gallops. Rachel said you were a bright lad, if a little eccentric in your training methods. Don't you like to take him on for a couple of weeks? See if you can knock the beast into some kind of shape for me. Where is he? Mike! He's a bit teed off because none of his horses have had a race yet. Come. Come on. Now, look. I pay you to train my horses on a full-time basis. Now, where the hell have you been? Neville Preston's. Oh? He wants me to take one of Sheikh Walid's horses for a couple of weeks. Does he now? And you don't. I don't what? Pay me to train your horses exclusively. You took the lease on Arkenfield and you set me up. But my wages will come out of the fees you and other owners pay to have their horses in training here. Now that was the deal, James, and that's the way it's got to be. All right, Nick, that's it. I'm off. Oh, if you hang on a minute, I'll give you a lift back the letter, miss. Well, under the circumstances, I don't think that's a very good idea. But thanks for the offer all the same. You know, if you took out the boss's offer, you'd save yourself a fortune in rubber. <laughs> what the hell's he doing here? Ogun? Nice to know you finally found your niche. With the Jim Carna set. Is he a friend of yours? Jimmy Blackshaw? He's had a lad with Sir Neville Preston. Let's just say we go back a very long way. Nick will show you where to bung your gear. Grab a cup of tea and we'll take him up into the gallops. Oh, well, now? Yeah. He won't like that. The mugger. He's fond of a nap in the afternoon. Is he now? You mess him about and he can turn right nasty. Him and me both. Half an hour, Jimmy, saddled and ready to go. Please yourself. Come on, Blackshaw! Put some effort into it! 
Get in. Down, Jimmy. Nick. Let's see what he'll do for me. Get up. <laughs> oh. Oh. You're right, Governor. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. He's got a thing about whips as well. Really hates them. Evening. Evening, Mr. Latimer. Mr. Let's go. Arkenfield. What about us? You've been moonlighting. No. That's not my information. No money changed hands. Mike was short staffed, Mr. Latimer. I helped them out. You know the rules, Hogan. I want you out. Arkenfield, my cardi. Hello. Yes, of course I remember. What can I do for you? I see. Chieftain's son. No, I'd be delighted. Yes, when? Tomorrow. No, no problem. Well, call in next time you're down and we'll sort out the paperwork. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Good night. What the hell do you think this is, a holiday camp? Come on, let's go. Nick, the list for first lot. You take care of it. Right. Jimmy, get the mugger. Yes, uh, I've uh, decided to take up your offer. Yeah, I think all things considered, you need me more than I need you. I'll start today. Come on. Come on. I have tried everything short of dynamite up his bum. Send him back. They don't call Sir Nav the old fox for nothing. Well, think about it. He's got an important owner. Dead keen that his horse should run. But the horse is no good. He's not fit. So what does Sir Nav do? Takes a wee look around. Finds himself a hungry young trainer who's on the make. And he palms him off. Get the transporter, Joe. Do you want to see anything else? Or shall I take him back to the yard? Take him back, and then I want to see you in the office. Uh, excuse me. I, um, I seem to take him on
turning. I wonder if you could... Uh... Oh, God, uh, I'm sorry about that. That's perfectly all right. Don't give it a second thought. I do sound more like your mother every day. Nothing strenuous, the hospital said. Not yet, anyway. Cycling isn't strenuous. Anyway, the physio said it'd be good for me. You should try it. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Tell him. What? That he's being ridiculous. You're being ridiculous. I know. But I just don't know any better, do I? He doesn't know any better, does he? <laughs> I've credited you with more sense. Oh, in his shoes, I'd be doing the same thing. Tom Fisher. I've come to say thank you. He called last night. He doesn't waste much time. I only spoke to him yesterday afternoon. So he said. Anyway, thanks for recommending me. I didn't. Huh? He did ask, and I thought about it, but no one sprang to mind to take on Chieftain's son. It was Dad who suggested you. Joe's collecting him from Hugo's tomorrow. Okay. Up we go. How did he take it? Well, how did he take it when you told him you were going to leave and work with Mike? <laughs> Badly. Aye. So, when I turn up to collect Chieftain's son... <laughs> he must have done his nut. Ah, well, he didn't. In fact, he looked as if I was doing him a favour. You've been feeding them. Hurry up, pills. <laughs> Just working the fetlocks off them. Interval training, like human athletes. Sprint, rest, sprint again. Certainly seems to have done the trick. You want to see them run once more? Love to. Unfortunately, no time. I think we should give Blackie to run at Doncaster Saturday week. Great. And raw silk? I've penciled him in for the Newbury Bank holiday meeting. Well, that's not until next month. Well, he's not fully fit yet. He looks terrific. He'll be ready for Newbury, James. All right. You're the boss. Well, while we're fixing up dates, the Ascot sales are coming up. What of it? Francis Ross has picked out a couple of two-year-olds. <laughs> I'm not in the market for buying any more horses. Black Deed and Raw Silk apart, I was uh, thinking more along the lines of replacing the others you've got. I take it he didn't like the idea of sending a few passports back to Weatherby's. If you're short of something to do, there's half a ton of oats that need shifting. Maggie West popped into the dog and gun last night. Maggie? She doesn't drink. That's right. So? Well, you know Maggie. How loyal she's always been to Hugo. Yeah. Yeah, no wonder he had a smile on his face. Good lad. Good lad. Yes, I, uh, I confirmed two cases of the virus in Hugo's yard last week. This fellow was clear then, but even so, it's a bit naughty of Hugo to let him go without saying anything. And the test results? Well, the labs are snowed under because of this new outbreak. We're going to be lucky to get anything through by the end of the week. Look, Mike, I'll tell you as soon as I know something. Thanks, Joe. OK. This thing spreads like wildfire. 
Do you want me to take him down to the isolation box? No. Let's keep this to ourselves for now. Video library. Yes. Do any tapes on the mugger? Well, I must have some somewhere. Why? Can I borrow them? Of course. Hop in. <laughs> Leave him for now, Joe. Find Nick. Time to fetch his ghetto blaster. Is what? You heard. Now get on with it. Mr. Hardy. Don't bother, Jimmy. New tactics. Let's leave him boxed up for a while. See if we can't bore him into action. <laughs> well, that won't work. Nevertheless. <sighs> As you're at a loose end, there's a couple of new saddles to collect from Nat Wattle in Newbury. If you don't mind, that is. I'll go and get my coat. Here. Take the Land Rover. This is bloody ridiculous. <clears throat> Ready, Nick? Yes, I'll ever be, Governor. Okay! Here. What? What? It's the noise that gets him going. Everyone yelling and cheering at the races, music, anything, so long as it's really loud. You mean he's deaf? Partially deaf. Well, it's not unheard of, of course. A few years back, Lord Stonedyke had a Harley Street specialist make up a deaf aid for his horse interpolator. Hopefully that won't be necessary. At least not while Nick's ghetto plaster holds out. Well, that's just as well, really. Damn thing went on the blink just before a race in Banger. Poor animal must have thought he had a swarm of bees inside his head. Took off like Lujinsky. Will you join us? Thanks, but I've uh, still got the morning list to do. Take care, Mike. Yeah, see you. He looks terrible. I bet he hasn't had a square meal in days. Arkerville, Mike Hardy. Oh, hello. No, I was, uh, just paperwork, you know. He's fine. Yeah, in fact, he's coming on a treat. Uh, when? Tomorrow. Well, uh, Well, I'd have preferred a few more days. Uh, I see. No, no, no problem. Yeah, what time? <laughs> okay, see you then. Good night. Scare? Joe just happened to mention it. Neville Preston. 
He wants to take a look at the mugger in the morning. And you haven't filled him in on the Hardy Equine Fitness Program? It works, John. That horse is in great shape. Even Jimmy's seen the light. Then I'd say that Neville's in for a pleasant surprise. He's bringing the owner with him. What the hell do you think Sheikh Walid's going to say when he sees his pride and joy being chased up the field by clapped out? Here you are, Mike. Well, put that on my tab. <sighs> Thanks, John. <laughs> Gentlemen, allow me. Nearly two o'clock in the bloody morning. Don't worry. Throughout the dance halls of southern England, Jacko's twisted sense of humor is legendary. He won't let us down. Governor. Governor. What? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the mugger. What about him? Listen, since you're so fussed about being made look a fool down at the paddock, I thought we'd take him up to the gaps. You must be joking. Well, we've nothing to lose, have we? Well... And besides, that old contrary bugger might surprise us. Excuse me, Governor. Uh, Sir Neville's just arrived. Says he'll see you up on the gallops. Oh, I don't believe it. You better saddle up, Black Deed. All right. Morning, James. Hi. Yes, seems to be a busy one. What the bloody hell is that? I haven't the faintest idea. going on? Trust me. I know you're keen on new techniques, Hardy, but I thought musical workouts were the prerogative of the aerobics brigade. Sir Neville, uh... Morning, Mike. Rachel. You as well. What on earth are you doing here? Thought I'd come and see what you've been up to with my horse. Your horse? The mugger, Hardy. Mrs. Ware owns him. I thought you knew. Ah, shall we get on? All yours, Jacko.
Gray explained about the mugger's hearing problem. I won't ask how you discovered it, but if he runs like that at Sandown, the credit will be all yours. Well done. Thank you. Now, who's for a lift? Mrs. Ware. I came with John. I'll stick with him. I'll talk to you later, Neville. Mr. Brandt. Yeah. Why not? I bought him from Sheikh Walid a couple of months ago. Then it was you who invited Sir Neville to the opening thrash at Brandt's? Yes. I'm sorry I deceived you. Why did you? Your silly pride. I knew you wouldn't readily accept another horse from me. I'm not looking for charitable handouts, Rachel. I'm not giving one. Look, the mugger is a first-class horse. You did what even Neville Preston couldn't do. You got him into tip-top condition. You made me look like an idiot back there. I didn't mean to embarrass you. Well, you did. Don't be so ungracious, Mike. You've been given an opportunity that most young trainers would kill for. One horse. That's all it takes, remember. Well, I promise you one thing. The mugger will be in at the death next week. Joe? Oh, Rachel. About the mugger. Uh, you wouldn't consider an offer. Sorry. Not for sale. I do have a coat, though, that you might be interested in. Why don't you come up to the stud and have a look sometime? OK, thanks. Mike. Um, yeah. Get hold of uh, Jack Ross's daughter, will you? There's a coat I wanted to take a look at. Right. And uh, while you're at it, give a thought to uh, which horses we ought to get rid of. Yeah. Good bad news, my friend. <coughs> Take him down to the isolation box and get hold of Stuart's door. <coughs> I want the market testing again today. love. You'll wear the print off the pages. You see that empty space on the shelf over there? It's reserved for your first classic winner. Have I said that before? Once or twice. <laughs> Do you remember the buzz we got in the early days? Working all the hours God sent, never knowing if we had enough money to meet the bills. Mm, I remember. It doesn't happen anymore. Have grown too big, too fat. But the horses, the thought of owning a derby winner, all oh, that really gets me fired up. So it should, the money you've invested in Arkenfield. In Mike. I only hope I've made the right choice. Okay, let's go. And Mr. Hardy, he's in the best shape ever. You couldn't have done more. Thank you, Jimmy. That was Stuart Staunton on the phone with the results of the test. Well, the blood count is perfectly normal. What are we waiting for? James, what can I do for you? I thought I'd better let you know that Rachel's accepted my offer for her coat, so you can pick him up whenever you like. That's great. But, uh, with the virus in the yard, we better wait a while. All right. Until we get a clean bill of health.
Speaking of which... Hang on. Think of the headlines. What headlines? New Boyd Arkenfield in brawl with ex-boss. It's one way of making the front page of the post, I suppose. Uh, Not the way to attract new owners. You finish off here. Say thank you, Hugo. Sorry? I've just saved you from a thumping, old son. What are you talking about, Jen? That trick you pulled on Tom Fisher's horse. Mike wanted to pull your ears off. Till I persuaded him not to. Mind you, if any of my horses go down with the virus, I'll see you get spanked. My professionals. In the third race this afternoon, the High Peak Stakes, a race over seven furlongs. The runners and the draw are as shown on the race card. Here are the riders. Number one is ridden by R. Foots. Two, T. Oliver. Three. Let me guess, you got ten to one. No, nope. we got twelve to one. Howdy. So now, look at the time. Sorry? Ten minutes to go. Instructions, man. Oh, I thought you'd want to. You know what to say. I've never had the beast in racing condition before. You'd better get on with it before he changes his mind. And the green cap. The jock is giving up in the third race, the high peak stakes. It's the two-year-olds over six far off. The seven riders are now on the way to post. One of the first out is Cam the Noise, number five. In blue and white stripes, white seized. Strike cap, red and white, Steve Walcroft. Here, Lou. Or Mike. Good. They're on the start of the They're off. And just behind them is the mugger. Then comes proof you can with a spar to be and less dosh is the present back marker. I told Trevor to tuck in and make his move at the two furlong marker. Isn't that a little early? Still, still expected to fail. But if he's got his nose in front with one to go, they won't seem for dust. Towards the outside, and they've now covered the first two furlongs. And it's here that the mugger is sent on. So Trevor Harvey has the mugger now in the lead and setting a strong pace to the other six, headed by Cam the Noise, still in second in the striped jacket. And after those two comes when the sun, less dodge is still last, but a spar to me is making good ground, as also is. Go on, my son! They're running down now towards the halfway stage. Oh, the mother! Stage, with the mugger mother! still in a clear lead. And as they come to the last two and a half, it's the mugger from Proof You Can, a spar to be and can the noise. Down towards the final quarter, and the mugger still a clear leader from the other six, headed by in second place as far to be, but the mugger now beginning to come back to his field, and he's been caught now by can the noise on the near side and by a spar to be, and so with the mugger dropping back rapidly, it's a spar to be over on the outside and can the noise on the near side, and these two are going to find out the finish at the end of the final furlong, and it's can the noise and Steve Moorcroft just going on from a spar to be with proof you can next, and then lower the north, and the mugger only fifth. First, number five. Mike. Second, number two. Third, number one, and the fourth horse, number three. First, number five, can the noise. Second, number two, as far to be. The horses are leaving the paddock, and the first one to come out after the course is Purple Passage, number one. Bloody virus. He did everything right. Yeah, he just had nothing left when Trevor asked him. I'm sorry, Mr. Hardwell. Not your fault, Jimmy. Or his. Just... All our hard work for nothing. No, not for nothing. You did everything that was asked of you. Except win. Yeah. Come on, Jimmy. Let's get him home. Come on, son. Yeah. Sorry. There's a bright side. Let me guess. Hugo's been turned over by the Inland Revenue. <laughs> <laughs> Neville Preston. He's going to send you a couple of his homebreds this winter. Seems he's rather taken with your crackpot ideas. Unfortunately, having the right ideas means nothing without the backup. Daily blood tests on the mug. I might have shown he was sickening, Rachel. I could have withdrawn him, saved him for another day. If you'd had your own lab on site. Yes. That cold I sold Brandt. What about him? Part of the asking price 
was an interest in Arkenfield. Why? I like winners. And new ideas. Brent's a hard man. He might have bitten off more than you can chew. Oh. You know how, where I first met Frank? No. New York. I was running my own advertising agency. Really? Mid-70s. The English rose was blooming. Still is. What I meant was, it taught me to hold my corner. I was up against some of the biggest sharks in the pond. It's James Brant's going to have his hands full, not me. And we're back in the saddle with trainer next week at the same time. to